Hey everyone, this is Matt Hendricks with The Sharpening Guy, and today I'm going to show you how to sharpen a wide bevel like knife like this. This is a traditional uh, double bevel Japanese knife. Um, this particular knife is uh, called a Nakiri. Uh, but anyway, whether you have a Japanese like this or even a Western style knife where the top of the blades are, uh, top of the blade here is parallel, and then you have these big wide bevels on the bottom for the blade grind, essentially you're going to sharpen them the same way. The main difference is with this Japanese knife, the angles are gonna be lower, whereas with a Western knife with a wide bevel, the angles would usually be just a little bit higher. Um, but other than that, it's essentially the same process. So the top of the blade, like I said here, um, this whole part with the forge finish is essentially parallel. It doesn't get any thinner as it goes down towards the edge. And then um, from the top of the wide bevel down to the edge, it basically tapers from here. And this part on a Japanese knife is called the shinogi line. So it tapers from the shinogi line down to the edge. And then right at the edge, there's um, kind of like a little bit of a micro bevel at just a slightly higher angle um, so that the knife holds up when you're uh, cutting through things. So anyway, so to start with, um, I'm going to use a rough stone just to speed things up, but you could do um, everything I do on the rough stone on your medium stone. And since I'm going to sharpen the edge, but I still want to maintain the proper blade geometry, I want to move the shinogi line up or essentially sharpen the wide bevel to move the shinogi line up the same amount I move the edge back, which isn't going to be very much because this knife is in good shape and there's no real damage or anything. But if I don't thin it, um, thin this wide bevel out a little bit each time I sharpen it, then pretty soon the edge is going to be back into thicker and thicker steel and the knife isn't going to cut very effectively even if the edge is sharp. So I'm going to hold it just like I'd hold any other knife, put it flat on the stone, and then push right on the wide bevel. Um, because this way I know that this is the part that I'm grinding against the stone. So after I do that, then I can just start sharpening it like this. And I move my fingers down it here as I sharpen it so that I'm sharpening the full length of the knife. And again, like I said, don't necessarily need to do a lot of thinning because it's not like I'm going to remove very much steel from the edge. But you do need to do a little bit each time just so your knife doesn't get thicker behind the edge. Obviously, if your knife had damage or a chip or it was really dull or something, then you'd have to do more thinning. But as it is, we're not going to have to do a ton. All right. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see we're thinning here right in the middle of the wide bevel, which is what we want. Good, we'll do a little bit more on that side. And so with my left hand, I'm pushing down with quite a bit of pressure into the stone because I really want the stone to cut and remove steel. There we go. And we'll just do a little bit more on each side and that should be good. Now a lot of times if you get um, a newer knife and you do this for the first time, you'll notice that the wide bevel would probably ground on a big wheel. Um, or sometimes on a big flat wheel, but it's not necessarily completely flat. So you're not going to get a perfectly even scratch pattern over the whole wide bevel with your stone. And that's fine. If you wanted to take more time 
and keep doing this until you did have a perfectly flat, even looking scratch pattern over the wide bevel, you could do that. But honestly, um, as long as your blade is straight and it's nice and thin behind the edge and everything like that, there's no real need to do that right away. And over repeated sharpenings, um, as you do this, um, you know, after a few sharpenings and you will get to a nice, um, perfectly flat, you know, even looking bevel. So anyway, um, I'm going to call that good. And the edge is in such good shape. I'm not even going to touch that on the rough stone. I'll do all that on the, uh, medium stone. Now for a uh, wide bevel knives like this, I prefer a little bit softer stone. So like, um, in some of my other videos where I'm sharpening, you know, a uh, more tapered ground knife, like a traditional Western type knife, you'll see me use like this medium stone a lot. This is a lot harder stone and I could use this stone with this knife and it would work fine, but a little bit softer stone like this more, uh, you know, traditional style Japanese water stone will just work a little bit better. So I'm just going to refine the scratch pattern on the wide bevel a little bit before we get to working on the edge. And this is a 1000 grit Japanese water stone. The last one was a 400 grit. I don't have to do near as much on this stone because I'm not really trying to thin on this stone so much as just remove the 400 grit scratches and replace them with 1000 grit scratches. Again, I'm still using quite a bit of pressure on the stone. There we go, and that's good enough for that. So now we'll get to the actual edge. So on a nice Japanese knife like this with hard steel, your edge angle is really only gonna be about there. Just maybe like if you stack maybe two or three pennies under your blade, not very high. Or maybe like if you uh, had like a cardboard matchbook that you laid your knife on, you know, something like that, nice and low. Um, with a Western knife, um, your angle would be just a little bit higher, not much higher. I mean, you're still, if it's a kitchen knife, you're just cutting fruits, vegetables, meat, stuff like that. So you don't need a real high angle, even on a softer steel Western type knife. But, um, but especially on a Japanese knife or even a high end Western type, type knife where it has good metallurgy and the steel is hard, you're going to want to be at a pretty low angle. So anyway, I'll just, uh, like I said, raise it a little bit like that. And we'll just sharpen the actual edge bevel here. This is in pretty good shape, so I don't expect this will take much. And also, if the knife is thin enough, it shouldn't take much. And I don't have a burr yet. In fact, maybe just to speed this up, I will um, do this part on the 400 grit.
There we go, now we're starting to get a bear. And so what I mean when I talk about a bear is, when I started, the knife was dull and the edge was kind of round like this. And so to make it sharp, I have to grind each side of the bevel flat until it comes to a point instead of being rounded. And so as I grind one side, a little burr or wire edge forms on the other side that I can feel if I run my hand off it. And then that side's flat. And then when I grind on the other side, I flatten that side out and then the burr moves to the opposite side. So for instance, if I sharpen like this, I'm making the bottom side of the, you know, this side of the blade have a flat edge bevel. And if I run my hands off this side, I can feel the little wire edge because it's curled up this way. But I can't feel it if I run my hand off this side of the blade because it's bent this way. Now, if I then turn the knife over and I sharpen it on this side, Now it's curled up this way and I can feel it here, but I can't feel it on the other side. And so you want to get your burr along the full length of the blade on one side and then check and make sure you grind a little on the other side and make sure you have it on both sides. Because the burr is what's telling you that you took your rounded edge and you got it so that it was completely triangular. So like I said, you could have done that all on the medium grip stone with the burr, but um, it was just a little bit faster on the rough stone. So now we'll just polish the edge bevel up on the medium grip stone here. Now, you'll still be able to feel a burr if you check for it on the medium stone like this, but since I got it on the rough stone and I know that I already have a triangular edge, I don't really need to check for it on the medium grip stone if I don't want to. Now, if you're concerned about your being at the right angle, you might want to check just to make sure you're getting it. But if you know you're at the right angle and you already got it on a previous stone, then you don't need to check for it. And you really want to get an even burr along the full length of the blade too. You don't want it to be really big and thick in some spots and really thin in another. So it should feel pretty even. So anyway, I have a nice even burr. Um, I removed the 400 grit edge scratches and put 1000 grit ones in. And so before I go to my finishing stone, I'm just going to use some edge trailing strokes like this, meaning I'm going away from the edge and not into the edge. Just to clean up the edge bevel slightly. Um, and just refine the cutting edge, make the burr a little bit smaller so that it's easier to take off when we use the finishing stone. All right, so now that we've done that, now we will go to a finishing stone. So I'm just going to use um, this stone, it's a Kitty M8000, but um, any, you know, 4000, 6000, 8000, whatever good stone will work. Um, so if I wanted to, I could just leave the white bevel alone. Some people like this hazy look, or otherwise if I wanted to, I could lay it flat, even on my finishing stone, and I could polish the wide bevel farther. So that's good enough uh, for me. It's nice and smooth, won't catch on anything. So anyway, so on the edge bevel, now that I'm on my finishing stone, I'm only going to use backward strokes. This will help refine the edge even farther. You won't damage the edge by accidentally cutting into your stone. And it will also help get the burr ready to be removed because essentially when you have two sharp 
polished edges coming to a point with no burr on them, that's when you have a sharp blade. So if I want to, to help remove the burr after a bunch of back and forth strokes, I can take one stroke like that. So a back and then again, parallel with the edge of the blade. Same angle I sharpened that and a few more like this. And that helps cut the burr off. It's a different technique than I've showed before, but you can use that on Western knives too. or if you wanted to, and I don't really feel a burr after that, but, or if you wanted to, after a bunch of back and forth strokes, you can do like I've showed before, take a soft piece of wood, plastic, cork, something like that, cut through it a couple times, take a few more edge trailing strokes, do the same thing, Either way, at this point, um, the knife should be sharp now. And so you should be able to cut whatever you want in your kitchen or anything like that. So um, I'll dry it off here and then we can just test it out quick so you can see. I'm drying the edge. I like to always go away from the edge just so that I don't cut my towel or my hand. water there still stuck to it there we go and so if you've done a good job then you should be able to test your knife and it should cut through things just fine so that's all there is to it to sharpening a uh, traditional double bevel Japanese knife, or for that matter, even a, a wide bevel Western style knife. Thanks for watching.